Hello guys and dolls, it's me Cora. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you this really cute look. Well, it's not like a particularly exciting look, but it's a nice neutral look with the Modern Renaissance palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This palette's really fun, but overall the tones of this palette are very red and very warm, very orange. So I wanted to show you guys a very neutral look. Um, I'm actually not going to use the Bouillon Fresco, or however you're supposed to pronounce that, the one like kind of cooler matte eyeshadow in the palette, because I wanted to show you guys how you could use these warmer shades in such a way that they present cooler based on the other shades that you pair with them and the way that you blend them and things like that. So we're gonna get started today with my Urban Decay eyeshadow primer. I love this stuff. This is the Enigma primer. It has a strong pigmentation to it. A lot of people have asked me to compare this to Eden. Um, Eden is a totally different thing. Eden has more of like a yellow base, whereas that one was a little bit more on the beige side. The first eyeshadow that I'm using today is called Warm Taupe. And in truth, I actually feel that Warm Taupe presents as more of a cooler taupe eyeshadow, but I guess it really depends on your own personal skin tone and your own preference, I guess. Um, but I, I, to me, cool taupe would be much more of a gray blue or more of a gray purple, whereas this one's definitely a brown gray. Now to warm up the crease, I'm taking raw sienna and I'm going to blend that right on top of warm taupe to bring it a little bit into the war more warm territory. At the end of this tutorial, it's all going to start to look a little bit more cool toned, but by adding that little bit of warmth, it balances it out because on my skin tone, things that are cool toned can go very, very cool and very gray very fast and kind of look a little dull. So now I'm taking Burnt Orange and I'm running that very softly just around the outer edges. So with, with Raw Sienna, we went really right on top of Warm Taupe. This we're sort of flirting on the edges. Blend, you blend, blend. I mean, your blending work is never done. This is the Smith 232 brush. It's fabulous for blending. For the highlight area today, I'm taking Tempera eyeshadow, which is wonderfully pigmented. It's a really great satin finish. And I have nothing else under my eyebrows. You guys know I usually put concealer under my eyebrows to sort of clean up that underbrow shape. But I'm essentially doing that with this eyeshadow. It's so pigmented that you can just apply it on nice and, you know, I definitely put on a nice coat of it down, not thick and gross or anything. I laid it down and then I'm going back over with my blending brush just to make that line between the crease colors and the highlight color completely disappear. Now I'm going in with a separate MAC 242 brush, which is the same one I use for tempera, and I'm just using that to apply warm taupe to the inner and outer corners of my lower lid. We're going to be doing a bit of a spotlight eye today, a very soft version of a spotlight eye, but nevertheless. Next I'm taking Vermeer and I'm just applying that just the width of the brush itself. You can see I have a lot of 242s on hand. I really like this brush. I think it lays down color really beautifully. So I initially lay it down just the width of the brush to get an idea of the placement and then I'll go in and I'll start wiggling that brush back and forth to blend it to the sides. And then I bring back the brush that I had warm taupe with and then blend that. So it's just a combination of sort of blending with one. Okay, that's good. All right, let's blend with the other. Okay, that's good. And that's really all blending is, is just trying to make it look as soft as possible. So now I am using my Kat Von D ink, ink liner, ink, for whatever, one of her liquid liners. It's one that has the felt tip, not the brush tip. Uh, not actually my favorite, but you know, you use what you've got. I bought that on accident. I had meant to buy the brush tip one and whatever, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Uh, so now I'm going to show you guys what I do to my brows. First I go over them with the Milani Brow Tint in Natural Taupe, which for me ends up having a little bit of a red tone just based on you know my skin tone and the way that it presents on my skin. Um, but it does dry down to a little bit of a more taupey color, so I want to redden that up a little bit. So I'm taking the Anastasia Brow Wiz in Auburn. Unfortunately, my Auburn was like on its last legs. Like I literally only had enough to just barely cover like one eyebrow. <laughs> Uh, I, I got a little bit of the color on the other one, but it didn't really quite do it. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking eyeshadows from this palette. I did a combination of red ochre and realgar, 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 whatever. Mix those two together on this Wayne Goss brush, and I'm using that to sort of push the color into my brows, and I, I think it turned out pretty great, actually. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind, you can always use eyeshadows as a brow fill if you run out. Uh, I've since replaced my pencil, so I won't have to do this next time, but I did want to show you guys how I do this, especially since 
as of now my hair is no longer this uh, darker shade anymore it's a lighter shade of red so I may be filling my brows in slightly differently in the future so I thought I'd show you guys one last time I am now using warm soul blush from Mac which is a gorgeous mineral blush it has a beautiful glow to it and this is the Wayne Goss airbrush and then over the top I'm going to be putting the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powder I was kind of feeling some kind of way about airbrush stuff, I guess. I recently got the Charlotte Tilbury powder and I cannot believe how finely milled it is. It just makes everything look so beautiful. It's one of those items where like people told me it was really great and I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. And then you actually get it. You're like, oh, okay, now I feel dumb. <laughs> Uh, so this is Crush Pearl Highlighter from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Glow Kit. I think this is the original Glow Kit. I don't know. They've done so many of them. I don't even know what edition of anything anything is anymore. And then this is my final step with brows. So I fill them in with a red tint or a red color. And then I go over the brow hairs. And I'm very careful to just try to get this on the hairs itself with a very dark brow gel. This gives the brow hairs a lot of definition and makes them stand out. Looks a little more natural, a little less fakey drawn on. So now I am taking Cypress Umber, which is a beautiful brown that can really go between cool and warm. Because it's being blended over the colors we had earlier, it'll present a little bit warmer there, but on the lower lid where it's going over Vermeer, which is a silvery pink, it's gonna read a little bit more gray. It's a real good balance between neutral and cool. Even though we've used some warmer eyeshadows, they're definitely in there and bringing in that neutrality where it's not super warm reading. Uh, and then here I'm just using my eyelash torture device. Gotta curl those lashes. For mascara today, I'm using the Makeup Forever Excessive Lash. This is their new mascara, and I love Makeup Forever, but I don't think I like this mascara very much. Well, first of all, I'll get out of my hair, which is just kind of neither here nor there, but um, I don't think it's doing anything special for my lashes. And to be honest, I mean, I have fairly average eyelashes. They're, you know, they're not terrible, but they're also not like, something to write epic poems about either. They're just kind of there. They're not super full, they're not super long, but they're also not super, super short either. So I can make them look really nice with mascara if I have a great mascara and this just didn't really do anything for me. Next, I'm taking the beautiful Antique Bronze from this palette and a Smith, I don't, I don't, I don't know the number of this brush, sorry guys. Everything will be listed in the description bar down below. And I'm applying that to my lower lash line to add a little definition. In my lower lash line, I'm adding a Pixie Pencil. Again, everything will be listed in the description bar down below because the name in this moment escapes me. Uh, a little bit of that mascara on the bottom. See, it's kind of clumpy. Like, I'm just, I'm not into it. And I love Makeup Forever. Sorry guys, I'm not feeling that mascara little bit of the MAC Prep and Prime Lip. So I want to take this opportunity to let you guys know that last week I uploaded a video called The Bra Guide and if you haven't seen it yet I highly recommend it. I've put several months of work into this video and I think it came out really great. It's not a titillating excuse to show myself in a bunch of bras or anything like that. It's about getting information about there to help the 80% of women who wear the wrong bra size. Uh, there's, you know, there's like a therapy session talking about like my own history with bras, talking about ways to get the proper bra fit, construction, and finding your true bra size. Um, and I really hope this video will help a lot of you. I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys already stating that you guys love this video and you'd like to see me do more like this in the future. So please do me a favor and check it out if you haven't seen it already. For my lipstick today, I'm using Sexy Salma from the new Charlotte Tilbury Hot Lips collection. You can see here it appears to be tugging a little bit. That's because I have the primer underneath. Um, and I need the primer because my lips have been rather chapped lately. Um, and I also find that this primer sometimes makes lipstick go on less opaque. Let me know if you've also noticed that with the MAC Prep and Prime Lip Primer. But it also, like once you get it on, it stays on really, really long. So it's, you know, it's a good combination. Anyway, love this lipstick. It's a beautiful, sort of naturally mauve, great color. So then the final act of this video, I wanna show you guys how I'm blending my real hair in with my fake hair, <laughs> with my extensions. Because I've had a haircut and my hair's a bit shorter now. And I also have these damn roots which are in my way. Um, my hair is naturally blonde and I dye it darker so it just it looks bad when the roots come in. So I just stuck a little headband on top to sort of distract from the rootage. And now I'm going to gather up a combination of my natural hair and the fake hair or the extensions. Uh, which I have dyed to match. I do have a video showing how I dyed my extensions to match my hair. So that'll be informative for you. So what I'm doing is I'm, as I said, grabbing a combination of the 
the extension hair and my own natural hair kind of gathering up as much of my natural hair as possible and what I'm doing is sort of a rough braiding technique it's, I mean it's braiding of course always gotta put the hair in the mouth to hold it right <laughs> so gross anyway uh grab it and i braided this underhand so that the the pretty part of the braid kind of shows forward and the purpose of doing this is because i didn't want to put any product in my hair but i wanted to blend in my extensions and i also didn't want to do like curling the hair to try to make it blend in so by doing this sort of rough braiding it gets the hair kind of all blended together and then i take one side and i kind of squinch it up like a lot of people do in you know like fun hair updos but it'll sort of hold the braid in place because the the false hair has a texture enough to sort of hold it in place for you and it's a great way to blend it in really quickly very boho it's not necessarily the tidiest hairstyle but that's not what i was going for so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video this is a really fun tutorial to do for you guys and i hope that the little hair tip here at the end also helped you i want to remind you again to go ahead and check out my bra guide it was such a labor of love i also have a fantastic swimsuit video if you haven't seen that all as well so I will see you guys in my next video. Remember to be vintage or tacky. Just be your own kind of beautiful. See you, bye.